Hey, welcome back everybody. June 14th, 2020, another Soapbox Sunday here from Blue Glow Electronics. Hopefully we've got some fun topics for you today. All right, first I wanted to say thank you. I made a post a month or so ago about doing some upgrades to the equipment here for our video making. And um, I put a post if any of you want to make donations. Several of you did, and uh, several of those were of significance. So I just want to say thank you to those involved in that. A big shout out to you, and, and you know who you are. Um, so what we've done so far, we've upgraded the camera in front of us. So hopefully these facial shots are... Um, much improved and not so washed out. Hopefully you can actually see the equipment behind me and whatnot. And so uh, big upgrade there. Second up, we've upgraded the camera behind us that we're using here. Moved up to a uh, Canon Rebel 7Ti. Um, so not quite professional grade, but, but meets our needs quite well. Uh, way above the little uh, handy cam that we used for so many years here. This is a great little camera. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, just, um, I believe I'm bringing a higher level of quality back here now. Also focus on some lighting. I did some major lighting upgrades underneath the bench behind me, as well as um, focused on some of the lighting here in front of me. So hopefully you guys are noticing this. This along with me putting much more time into the editing of my videos, hopefully they are of higher quality. So uh, stay tuned and uh, see the results. Okay, another tech tip for you guys. If you wonder how I keep all of my test leads and cables organized, take a look over my shoulder back here. And it still might look a little messy for you, but I promise you, a thousand times better than being in boxes or bins or whatnot. Let me show you what these are. These are Promona test lead holders, okay? You can pick them up even off of Amazon. They're about $13 a piece, and I've got five of them mounted, and as you can see here in these pictures. And just pay attention when you're ordering them. They come with different size spacers. So for small leads like um, uh, maybe a banana jack cables, they're going to be a little bit narrower. When you want to get into holding things like RCA cables, you're going to want a little bit wider. And so I've got a mixture of those right now. But um, as you can see here in the pictures, they just make for holding all of your cable leads and keep them organized. It's kind of like tools. If you always put them back where you got them from, you'll always know where they're at. And that's what these things help me do. So uh, hopefully you enjoy this tech tip. And like I said, easy enough to find on Amazon or eBay, either one. Made by Pomona, P-O-M-O-N-A. Just search for that and test lead holder, something like that. You will find them. Okay, as much as I love making videos, you guys may know this, I love watching YouTube videos. It's what got me into making YouTube videos. At any rate, I'm always out looking for, you know, cool stuff to watch in, in this audio, electronics type space. And I recently came across this video. It is on Phil Weingarten's Fabulous Fakes. And this is an absolute great use of 41 minutes of your life if you don't have anything else going on. I found it to be just amazingly fascinating and it'll really make you think long and hard about the lengths that this guy went to um, to make money. So, um, and how it actually turned out in the end, some of his fakes, hmm, pretty expensive themselves. So if you get a chance, watch the video. I'll put a link down below. All right, next topic. Okay, you guys may not believe this, but I am guilty of copyright infringement quite a few times. <laughs> and I finally got caught for it. Uh, what I'm talking about, if you remember in my early videos, during my intro, I played this little song that was really cool. And I kept having people ask me, well, what is that song? I really like that. Well, it was a little segment, an opening intro segment from a live concert in 1973 of the Stooges playing Open Up and Bleed, okay? It's one of my favorite all-time songs, and so I just took this little intro from what was a live concert um, recording and was using it as my intro. Well... I guess the analytics, the AI engines that um, YouTube has, has finally caught up with me and they've figured out what song that is. And they're basically saying you can't use that song in your videos. So YouTube has been pretty cool, though, lately about it. it. A year ago, if you got a copyright infringement 
on something. You used a piece of material inside of a video that you did not own the license for. Basically what they would do is they would flag it with copyright infringement. They did not make you take the video down. They just gave credit to the, um, to the video and the use of that content in it back to the original owner. What that means though for people like me that makes YouTube videos, they they deselect your monetization flag on the, that video. In other words, you're not eligible to gain uh, Google AdSense revenue for that for that video, which means you make no money off of that video. Eh, it's not the end of the world. But at any rate, as my videos are getting flagged, now YouTube has a new feature out there, and it's pretty cool. It gives you two options. One, it gives you an option to go in and edit out that part of the video. So that's what I've been doing. As my videos have been getting flagged, the older ones, I've just been going out and taking out the little intro screen with that video in it. And then you basically just tell it save. It uploads it. It removes the copyright infringement flag, and it turns monetization back on for you. Okay. So you can actually make a few pennies off of these videos again. The other option it gives you, let's say the video was in the middle of your video and you didn't want to just cut it out because maybe you were it was some background music or something like that. You can actually just suppress the music now. So you, or you can replace it with another piece of music. It'll let you do that and uh, that, it, that isn't copyrighted. So at any rate, if you're watching any of my older videos and you're wondering what happened to the music here in this little segment or something, or you're wondering what happened to the intro um, walk-in, that's, what, that's what's been happening as these have been getting flagged. I just thought I would give you guys an explanation. Come clean on my copyright infringement. The intro I'm using now, as you notice, I'm using um, some open public domain type um music and whatnot, and so it's licensed to be used for public use, and uh, I won't run into this anymore. All right, next topic. Okay, one of my favorite personal topics I could possibly talk about with you guys today. I just wanted to start sharing the journey we're on with this. So I bought this house um, some 17 years ago, and it's kind of out in the country in rural Davie County, North Carolina, okay? Uh, the closest store to me is about seven miles away, um, right off of I-40. So I'm just kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And I like that a lot, okay? Don't have a ton of neighbors out here. I'm certainly not um, bound by any, um, what do you call them, homeowner, homeowners association rules or whatnot. Um, we've, we've got roughly 60 acres of land out here, and we absolutely love it. Anyway, behind my house, about 400 feet is a barn um, that has been here since we bought this building. And I'll throw some pictures up along the way through this as I tell the story. At any rate, absolutely love this barn when I bought the house. Um, the barn was built in the early 70s, maybe 71, 72, 73, something like that. Um, and it was originally built, the front, front part of the barn had concrete in it, and it was kind of shop floor. Um, workbench, things of that nature, and the back half of the barn was just kind of, you know, dirt floor and had a big opening in it, and um, basically had a, the entire building has a second floor. It's um, 40 feet wide by 60 feet deep, so it's 2,400 square feet, and then if you if you count the second floor, you got 4,800 square feet of storage or whatever you want to use. And then on the back of it is a um, 30 by 30 foot um, addition that was on the back that they put hay under. So basically, you know, people would pull in with their tractor, put it, put hay up into the lofts. Um, they would um, keep their horses and cattle and whatnot in the stalls. And then the back part is where they stored their tractors and whatnot underneath of that. At any rate... I bought it. I'm not a farmer. I don't have animals, whatnot, and uh, I wanted it to turn into a really nice shop. Well, for the last 17 years, what I've been doing is raising three kids, okay? So I put three kids through braces. I put three kids through cars. I put three kids through college and um, so on and so forth. And my building out back just never was a priority, and it just basically was storage, okay? The downside of it for storage was that when they originally built this, it was designed to be a hay barn or whatnot. 
and um, so it's a little bit open air. If you go to the end of the eaves where the where the roof meets the building, you know, there's gaps about this big that that birds and bees and wasps and whatnot could fly in and out of, um, so on and so forth. So it's never really been a sealed up tight building that I could uh, keep things in and keep you know bees and whatnot away and bugs away from. Um, so I've always had to box things I've put up in there really well, use, put, use a lot of plastic containers, things of that nature. So anyway, fast forward to um, today. My kids are now out of college, <laughs> finally have some disposable income, and um, I've been waiting about two and a half years to get um, some friends of ours that do construction work finished with some jobs they had lined up and finally got to us. So. I'm getting a full remodel of this building done. They're about three to four weeks into it at this point. And as you can see here, um, you know, boxing in the eaves, we're going to um, tighten up all the siding. We're putting insulation into the building. Uh, I'm going to paint the entire uh, building. Uh, I'm going to close in the second floor and put down new flooring on the second floor so that um, the big opening's not there for putting hay and whatnot in the top. Um, and basically we're gonna turn this into some nice finished space, okay? Somewhere along the way, about five years ago, me and a couple of my kids got together and closed in a room here on the side that you can see. And that gave me some more um, sealed up storage space. Um, and so I have been leveraging that for a lot of electronics equipment, things of that nature I wouldn't just want out in the open. Um, but nonetheless, um, we're, we're making progress. So the last few weeks, what have I been doing on the weekends? Instead of making videos, I've been out there cleaning up. And I've been, honestly, I, I know I went through, <laughs> I went through two dumpsters full of stuff I threw away. And I'm not talking little dumpsters, you can see here. I'm talking 30 foot long dumpsters of uh, a lot of stuff we accumulated over the years that just needed to go old furniture from where my wife's grandmother passed away, my, my people in my family passed away. and Somehow everybody knew I had all this storage space, so stuff ended up in our building. At any rate, I'll keep you informed as we go along. The coolest part, on the second floor at the front, there's a space about 40 feet wide and about 30 feet deep, so 1,200 foot of space that we're going to completely remodel, close in, it's going to be not, not some nice space. It is going to be my listening room. I plan to be able to bring people over, let them listen to gear. I'm going to have a whole storage room on the bottom full of tons and tons of gear. Um, you know, if people are interested in buying some of it. This is kind of my whole retirement plan here. See, restore stuff, make videos, build stuff for sale, let people come over, have a place for them to audition it, listen to it or whatnot. And you may wonder, hmm, how am I going to get all this heavy stuff from the first floor to the second floor? So we've been doing a lot of research. We're going to build a little uh, cargo elevator. And thanks to Larry, who's been helping with some of my CAD work, he drew this up for me. Um, pretty cool. I've got it off right now at a um, welder welding this up for me. We're going to use that along with an electric hoist and some tracking. Um, to give us an elevator from the first floor to the second floor. So if I if I got a heavy tube amp, but don't feel like carrying up the stairs when I'm 70 years old, I can put it on the lift, raise it up to the second floor, and then um, put it wherever we want it, want it for listening to it. The other thing that's cool about this big 1,200 foot space, you know, we could potentially host some audio meetings here in this building. Um, you know, there's a local triad group we've got here. Could use some this space from time to time as well as, I've got it in my plans when I retire, to hold some classes on building uh, tube amps. So basically you would come for one or two, three day course, whatnot. Um, I would provide everything you needed to build an amplifier, build a preamp, whatever we're doing at that point in time. Uh, there would be a fee involved in that and we would walk you through um, step by step how to build this. And when you leave, you get to take your amplifier or preamp, whatever it is we built with you and it should be a pretty cool pretty cool thing but now I've got the space to do a nice clean space for that and we've got space below that that's all nice neat workshop and I've got a ton of storage space so stay tuned that's the plan I'll keep you updated as we move along all right a hint on an upcoming topic I'm hoping to make some more videos on 
you guys remember about a year ago I switched away from using the Pete Millet software driving the 8903 behind me because the drivers and keeping up with Windows 10 was just a nightmare and it was just a challenge to keep going. At any rate, I switched over to using the piece of software from the stuff made and the diligent um, audio analyzer, I mean uh, waveform device. I'm just still not happy with it all. I mean, it works and it, and, it, and, it, and it meets most of my needs. I just am looking for something a little better and more reliable and it's being updated regularly. And so, you know, on one end of the spectrum, you've got the audio precision, precision you know, $18,000 solution that would certainly meet my needs. I just don't feel like for my hobby needs here, I need that. So at any rate, I'm on some explorations with a few other newer devices at this point in time and set up. And so stay tuned. That's all I'm going to tell you more coming down this path as we get into probably summer and fall. But my goal is sometime in this year to have a new solution in place that's rock solid with software that's being updated regularly. So stay tuned. All right. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you learned something today or at least, uh, Got to listen to some of my ramblings. Either way, I had fun. Hope you did too. Thanks, everybody.